So right now with the crisis in Ukraine, there is a lot of talk about what can possibly be done. How can this situation be resolved? Well, unfortunately, these things called nuclear weapons are placing a hell of a lot of limits on what just exactly might be done. And right now, we're kind of in a situation that looks a lot like the Cold War. I'm Stuart Hooper, a lecturer in political science and PhD researcher. Please subscribe if you are new to my channel. I'm only concerned with a practical, pragmatic and critical analysis of current global affairs. I don't touch on the left or the right or party politics here. We kind of leave that nonsense at the door and instead look at the real issues that are right in front of us and try to think through some solutions to these particular problems. Now, of course, with Ukraine, there is currently a lot of talk about the potential for this situation to spark a nuclear war. And I am absolutely in agreement with this. I believe this is the most dangerous global situation that the world has faced since the Cuban Missile Crisis. But there doesn't really seem to be too much analysis in the mainstream media right now of precisely what it is that makes nuclear weapons have such an impact on a situation like this crisis in Ukraine. Yes, we all know that nuclear bombs create a very big bang and are immensely destructive, but the impact that these weapons have on a political and military situation like we're currently living through goes far beyond the destructive capabilities of these weapons. A really classic text for understanding the importance of nuclear weapons in a crisis like what's currently going on in Ukraine is called Arms and Influence by Thomas Schelling. Would highly recommend if you want an in-depth, detailed overview of the politics of nuclear warfare. But we're going to go over some of his key points here in this video to explain what's going on with this particular piece of military technology. And this really is one of Schelling's main points. Technology affects the possibilities for war and peace. In this case, if, for example, the US gets involved in implementing a no-fly zone in Ukraine, that means attacking Russian air bases, radar stations, air defense bases, and ultimately shooting Russian planes out of the sky. If we include nuclear weapons in this situation, like we would have to if we were talking about the US shooting at Russia, that changes the outlook for war versus peace dramatically. It changes it in a thermonuclear direction. So specifically, what do nukes do? They change the character of a crisis. They change the calculations that we can or cannot make. And they impact the expectations that we should have of the other side. If we do this, what will they do in response? If they do that, what will we do in response? And when we talk about nuclear weapons, we're talking about playing that game where the escalation slowly goes up and up and up on either side until it reaches that point where one of them does hit the proverbial big red button and the nukes are fired. The other side responds, firing their nukes. The world comes to a rather abrupt end. So we're talking about specifically the character of this weapon technology the character of nuclear weapons. It's not the fact that the US has thousands of these and Russia has thousands of these. Yes, okay, that's an important fact. But it's the character of the weapons that changes the debate, changes the calculus of what we can and cannot do here. Changes it on the lines of speed, stability, and strength. These three things change dramatically when we bring nuclear weapons into the equation. Are we going to be more or less vulnerable as a result of doing something when nuclear weapons are in the equation? What will happen tomorrow 
when nuclear weapons are in the equation. This is a constant threat and a constant question. Now, continuing, technology and nuclear technology and specifically is based upon missiles which are now hypersonic, meaning they go faster than the speed of sound. Speed plus nuclear weapons is extremely dangerous. And we were already in a situation where speed was a problem for nuclear weapons prior to the development of hypersonic missiles, thanks to ballistic missiles, which go up, out the atmosphere, travel in space, re-enter the atmosphere, hit their target. That could be done in about 20 minutes from Russia to the United States. So again, we're not going to be escaping from a nuclear war. Hence, the overall point of this video, remember you guys, get active or get radioactive. Start moving in an anti-war direction, start pressuring your politicians, your leaders to peacefully resolve this crisis. So when it comes to speed, speed can give motive and incentive to leaders to be the first to attack, the first to launch, particularly when they are suspicious of the other side and the other side's intentions. This can be particularly dangerous. And as Schelling says, military technology that puts a premium on haste in a crisis puts a premium on war itself. A vulnerable military force is one that cannot wait, especially if it faces an enemy force that is vulnerable if the enemy waits. And the question becomes, which leader in the crisis will find the suspense most unbearable? The urge to preempt the actions of the other side can then become the dominant motive in a time of crisis. This can lead to accidents, as I mentioned this in a prior video. This is why it was extremely dangerous and reckless for Putin to say, I'm putting my nuclear forces on high alert. Because what does that mean? It means that now they're on a hair trigger, which can be pulled perhaps in a situation where if it was not on a hair trigger, if it was not in a time of heightened emergency, heightened crisis, heightened alert, heightened look out for any potential sign that you may need to launch, you can see what's going on here. Crisis, emergency, suspense, haste, all of this stuff is extremely dangerous when we're talking about nuclear weapons. So the idea of implementing a no-fly zone in Ukraine is absolutely a non-starter because of the potential for this spiral of escalation between the two sides that will end in the destruction of our planet. Please subscribe if you are new to the channel. I'll be bringing you guys lots more reports just like this one where we delve into some of the theoretical, conceptual ideas about these important international political conflicts. And I will try to teach you guys and give you an understanding of ways to look at these problems that you are not going to get on the mainstream media. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at the link below. And as I already mentioned, get active or get radioactive. Start calling your congressmen. Start calling your members of parliament. Tell them we need a peaceful resolution to this crisis. We need it immediately. Thank you guys for watching and I'll be back with more real soon.